Hi everyone, this is Gary Tucker. Welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor. This week we're doing something light and fun. We're painting uh, the dog and the dog walker. Uh, not just one dog, but actually several dogs. Uh, pretty common these days to see someone out walking the dogs as an occupation. And uh, it can be really fun to watch this and even funner to sketch it and think about it in terms of a painting. So I invite you to come along and uh, enjoy an afternoon of painting dogs. He'll be a, sh a schnauzer. Well, I think everything kind of starts by sketching in the field, painting in the field, observing nature, and getting a feel for your subject. In this case, I see a couple Great Danes walking through uh, the Commonwealth Mall in Boston. And the weather's good, so I took my sketchbook and did a little painting of this. I also observed and sketched other dogs that I saw walking around that day. And while they're moving subjects, you'd be surprised at how much information you can capture. All of this goes into the next painting, which is a, a studio work. But I feel it's really important for the artist to sit in nature, observe and record what you see. Back in the studio, I'll pull up some images that I've seen on the web to get more specific knowledge about the breed. But I should really master the Boston Terrier. Since I'm from Boston. Boston Terrier, sort of. And you can see here, um, I'm starting to narrow down the sort of image that I'd like to present. And I'm focused in particular on the image on the left. I've arranged uh, my figure, my dogs to give me an interesting composition. And I've placed myself on eye level with many of the dogs so that we're kind of looking up at the figure. I like this, this particular vantage. The breeds at this point are sort of indistinguishable, but as we get into um, drawing and the painting of the particulars, we'll see different characters emerge. Okay, so the drawing is in place, the characters are here. They're drawn a little darker than I usually do. Um, and I'm thinking about my approach to the background. So I don't want to paint specific trees, but I want to get some lighter passages and some darker foliage, all of an kind of warm hue. So I'm starting with a uh, yellow ochre. It's not a bright, bright yellow, but it's definitely a nice warm hue. That's a good place to start. And a bigger brush. So we're covering a large area. And I'm gonna paint right through everything just to get started here. We are very much finding our way. I am thinking about the bottom of the street, which as I said, is very low. We're very low. The dogs are very low. So things are kind of um, an animal's perspective, almost.
Let's bring um, that same warm hue for the moment. I might cool it off a little later, but for now, I'm going to paint that as well. Trunks of trees. And I'm going to drop in some colors uh, to get things started. I want to use some warm hues of reds, golds. I don't want it to be too bright. So we'll mix it with a little bit of green as well. This is Hooker's Green, and it's a nice complement to this red. Let's just drop in some of this. Some spaces are a good idea. many even spaces that's easy to fix Switch the brush here to a little smaller brush. My Sabolette. And some burnt sienna, yes. A little bit of red with that, yes. I don't want to get too dark. Let's worry about it. Some color floating through here. Some green hues as well to complement that. I'm doing this wet on wet so that things kind of run together. And we do need some back there behind everything. We don't need a lot. 
Okay. Yes, I'm gonna hold off on this now and try to think about coming back to the subject, placing the subject and then adding some color towards the end. Don't want too many hard edges back here. Some are okay. This white back here is just a, a crossing street. And again, it's all kind of um, loosely placed at this stage. Let's, let's let this dry, and then we'll come back to our subject, paint our subject, and adjust the background later. A little light passage behind our subject is a good strategy. All right, just a little lighter behind our subject. Okay. All right, we can see our drawing through the light layer of paint. We've got a feeling of a little bit of atmosphere, a suggestive quality to the background. Um, it's tricky when you're placing the background because you want to, I mean, our desire is to kind of paint more detail into it, more than we might see, or actually, um, more than we need because the background is basically a support for whatever we're doing uh, in our main subject so it's always a little i think there's some wisdom to stopping early and just getting a, a hint of the atmosphere and now we return to the subject and we can start to think about painting our subject so I'm going to go um, from, let's go from uh, left to right, and we'll start with the dachshund. I'm, I'm going to use descriptive colors, but mm, I'll be painting them as though they're in a little bit of, um, well, a little bit of a drizzly day, something like this, where the color is muted. So even though there's a strong chocolatey quality to the dachshund, I'm going to be adding a little bit of blue to that. Ultramarine or some of this lavender, depending on how dark I want to make it. That's, that's the first thing to answer, is how dark are we going to make it here? Let me just start and try to get the feeling of the, the body, of course. The profile, just like we did in our exercise. We can do that. Then uh, we've done a lot, actually. Let's do a silhouette. Something like that. They have a very big 
kind of chest area. And of course, the small legs. Uh, let's add a little gray to that. Um, I'll use, I'm going to be using some Payne's gray, so which is a cooler gray. I'll be using some Payne's gray, so that makes sense to put a little bit of that with our burnt sienna. And just across the bottom, a little darker, a little less water, because we're working on a wet area here. These dogs are coming from my imagination, which gives me freedom, but also, same time, can make it a little difficult to really estimate the color, what you want to do with the color. You can look at a reference photo. It's not going to be the same pose, but it can be useful to give you some information For example, like the Basset Hound, the, the coloring of the face can be very useful uh, to give a recognition of the breed and a recognition of the particular pose. So they have a sort of white passage and definitely around the eyes it's a little uh, darker. So we'll do that. Of course the ears are this long brown cloth brown application a lot of white um, in the front part in the chest and on the back sometimes there's some spotting so i bring all this brown kind of right up to the muzzle this is going into the eyes, and then there's a little white on the top of the head. And I'm just going to put uh, brown for the moment. I'll go a little darker later on. For the moment, a little bit of brown here on the muzzle, and a little bit of coloring on the paws too. Another beautiful breed. I'm going to take some of that gray that's a little diluted and just kind of come across the chest area. So that my, this is probably how I should have started this with this light gray. And then added the darker markings to that. There we go. All right, let's move to um, our figure. We've got a lot of experience with figures now. We're going to start with warm hues, repeating sort of the hues that we used around burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre, and some blue. Let's put a complementary blue over here, probably that ultramarine. We want to mix that up well. We'll start with this general dark application, get the body going. Uh, 
shoulders. Kind of just follow the application I made or the drawing that we made earlier. that spray bottle. You know I like that spray bottle. I'll use a, a little bit of a lighter color here through this leg. And Coming a bag. The temptation is to paint everything, um, you know, a different color, but I think on this rainy day we can get by with a more tonal application and add more color as we go along. About the right size, isn't it? Well, let's do that now. Let's put a little, for example, we can use some red accents in the face. We could use a uh, blue jean color in that brown. I'm going to do that. just to make it a little different. I go a little um, darker at some point, but not right now. I like this kind of broken effect here, so I'm gonna leave that. enough. Let's move on to our little Yorkie. Our Yorkie from New Yorkie. Of course a lot of brown. Distinguishing ears. Kind of a lion's mane. Lion mane head. And tiny little legs. We don't really need a tail for here, do we? This one, just two legs maybe. And let's um, put some coloring on. Maybe we'll put a little hint of some darker fringe color while it's still wet, a little bit of that Payne's gray and a little bit of sepia just around here underneath. We'll add features a little later. A little tint around the ear, perhaps. Something like that. Make the head come forward. Husky. Well, let's do our hound back here. I'm just going to do a simple color just to get to break up this space, actually. He's more of a space holder. I 
than anything else. Okay, so far so good. Let me switch over to a little bit of Payne's Gray here. For our Husky, which has these beautiful markings. with a very pale wash first. Our menagerie is getting some some characters here. Uh, what do I want? Paints gray, a little bit of ultramarine blue. darker definitive color around the face is very typical of the husky breed and it works out just perfectly for us because we need that surrounding dark to make the light the bright white of the fur come out nature is always accommodating the watercolor artist How about the tail? It's kind of a whitish tail. It's not really going to appear against that mid-tone, so... I'll decide later. And we'll add the features a little bit later when this dries. Golden, is there any question? Must be yellow ochre. I think I'll just give it a kind of, I guess I might turn with this. If it gets too dark, it'll feel like an Irish setter. Oh, that's okay. Now where did I put his legs? Ears are really important for our golden. Okay, and the uh, Westie. Be easier to make them into a a um, Scottish terrier with black, but I'm going to I'm going to try and convey that white 
feeling. All kind of the same tonal value, just like we did up here. All kind of the same tonal value uh, with a little bit of, you know, color change. So this guy would be noticeably lighter, wouldn't he? And so much is dependent on the face. Hmm. A dilemma. Do I redraw it? Showing the face. Um, no, we'll just make them into a, a shape. Maybe we can show a little bit of accented white to convey it. I've kind of fallen in love with the shape, so it's really hard for me to think of doing anything else. So we just have to Leave it at that. We'll put a collar on. We'll use some whites here, some highlighted whites. That should help. We can do a bit more in the background, perhaps. All right, so this is um, stage two. Do we want to do anything in the background? Not really. I think I'm going to do some reflections in the foreground because they're kind of floating right now. Do the reflections, uh, then I'll return and start to put features on the dogs, some detail work. And I'm going to make just a generic gray here for the reflections. I'm not going to worry that they're soft edges. Very important reflection. Too. Remember, reflections coming straight down. Don't really have to match the shape completely. Some color could be good. You know, a little bit of the local color could be good. I don't want to get too dark, though. Bassett, yes, must have reflections. Even a reflection of that big ear. Love it. Dachshund, of course. Human. It's 
So we really feel the perspective is good here. We do feel like we're on the same level. Eye level with our dogs. Right, that's important. Okay. Do we want to do anything in the background? Anything more? I am tempted to do some more foliage overhead or showing a trunk of a tree or something like that. But I'll lose the dynamic. The dynamic is kind of key in this to keep the figures very readable. I might go a little darker on the periphery. That would be one place that could be good. Uh, I'm going to start to put some color into the figure, a little more blue. Make that come forward a little bit. Put a warm vest on of, yeah, burnt sienna. This allows me to create a little more interest in the figure. Also feeling like uh, she's a little more animated. Still a little darker, I think. Well, we could put some clothing onto our doggies. <laughs> There's certainly an abundance of that. Okay, so this dachshund, we need some little darker color underneath. Trying to get too fancy. Uh, I guess let's try a little nose, our first nose. I uh, really starts to give them personality when you put the eyes. Hmm. You're going to need to get a little darker in the dogs themselves. Not a lot. And I want to avoid, if I can, to be 
outlining. That means using too many outlines to describe. So I'm going to beef up the color just a little bit. And the front. That's my tummy. Also a little bit there. There we go. These on the big sides for a dachshund, that's okay. Let's do the Basset Hound. I'm sending along some images that I'm using as a reference, which you can certainly also use if you like them, or you can research. You can research and find your own. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. that long narrow nose and the kind of little bit of sadness to the eyes they fall right in those areas of brown that we were using yes he does have some girth to him all my dogs are fully matured, so they're, some of them are a little beefy. Okay, can I get some definition in the ears to make those ears come off? There's some nice lines I can, for those ears. They will make them a little darker. Mm -hmm. See how I made this ear come down? Oh, so cute. continue here we need really dry paper for small eyes Small, round eyes, very much near the middle of the face. And nose too, very small. See how they just grab you? Now you can't look away. Okay, let's put a little bird sienna. Working with a really small brush now for this detail. Let's do a little bit of, because they have kind of a Fu Manchu. Uh, well, I guess it depends how they're groomed, but I'm gonna put a little bit of
some little darkness in the ears. Big ears. Very attentive. Okay. <laughs> you know, I never expected it be so cute. Just loads of fun, and I wish they were all mine, but they're not. Okay, let's move to the husky for a few details. Okay. So many dogs to choose from. We could do collies. I forgot I wanted to do a bulldog. He didn't make it the cut this time. Yeah, so I started a little bit of a thing here. And I'm going to continue to build that. I'm working dry now. So I, I can actually create more of a feeling of the hair. This is what's going to make the, the face come out. Of course, smiling makes us smile. Almond eyes. Okay. Pretty nice, the menagerie. Uh, my golden. They have a longer nose. We already set up the features. We set up the ears. Let's bring the ears out just a little more using some sepia or burnt sienna. We need a nice shadow to grab that triangle right under here. And also on the other side. that we can get the nose his head is slightly cocked this is a very fun pose for for the Danny dog because it shows interest it shows a curiosity and we love that we just love that eyes Small, dark touches. We already created a bit of hollow uh, there. I'm going to add a little color also in the form of
and it's a little stiff feeling. You know, it's all the, they're all kind of in a trot or walking forward. I put one leg high, one leg low. All right. You can see our hound now kind of retreats to the back. We need to see him. Let's put a tail there. And we'd be fun to. Put a collar around him. Okay. Show his side a little more too. But he's not sure what to do about the ears. I kind of want him floppy ears. But it's hard to show. There's not a lot to... Yes, he'll be a, sh a schnauzer. There we go. Close enough. Okay. Uh, corgi, uh, not corgi, um, Westy. So we can do a little bit on the underside here. Shape the hair a little bit on the underside to make, make him feel more like a white animal. Certainly we use a little cooler color than the other dogs have. That means uh, Payne's gray. I'm gonna add just a little bit of the undercoat there. I don't have a dog right now myself. I live vicariously through all my good friends that have dogs. Better idea, actually. Just make the shadow side darker. That's pretty good. Okay. Let's uh, put in some details. Just a suggestion of features. A very good baseball cap that we'll have to do. Push this back, make a receive. Mm. 
we add, of course, we need some fun stuff for the colors. And a bandana. This guy already has his color. Let's put a black color here. Maybe here as well. This golden needs a little stronger tail. And I'm going to give a, a gray tail to the husky after all. A little more darkness to that tail as well. Okay, let's stop here. Well, one more thing I think would look good is to imagine they're walking on sort of a, since we're so close to the ground, Um, pavers could look good. just slightly described makes the reflections kind of sit down when we do this. Maybe a little more of a neutral color. don't need to go everywhere and you don't need to connect the lines really also in this case it's making the pavement feel just a little wetter well you see i've given all the attention to our to our uh, dogs and um, 
put the walker in, but not with the same amount of uh, attention to detail or expression. This is because I want to kind of really make it all about the dogs and the characters that they have. Definite areas for improvement. You know, we can make the features a little more expressive. Background is starting to feel a little pale now, so I might adjust that later, but not right now because right now I, I want to let things dry and see how they look once they dry. After they dry in the uh, dogs, I might return and add some um, I know what we need. <laughs> we need the finishing touch. Some of these guys anyway are older. You know, they get tired easy. I can imagine like a little tongue here. Well, thanks friends for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed the project and got something out of it. If you'd like to support this channel, please have a look in the description below where you can find links to my online store, to my website, and to my Instagram page. Your support enables me to produce content like this on a regular basis. Until next time, adios.